Hi, I'm Eric Siegel with Eric'sTrains.com and welcome to episode 45 of my video train blog series. Okay, so right now the layout is a complete disaster because I'm doing a lot of work on the main table. As I showed you in episode 44, I was doing some demolition work to get rid of my old Atlas turntable and replace it with a new turntable that I bought from Millhouse River Studio. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how to install the new turntable, so let's get to it. Okay, so here is the new Millhouse River Studio turntable that I bought. This is the 24-inch diameter model. Now, as I've said before, don't worry about the fact that there are no detail parts up here on the deck. Those are packaged separately when you buy the turntable, and there's just no point installing them until we've got the turntable installed and configured because we don't want to risk breaking any of those delicate parts. But the turntable itself is all one piece, so it's actually very easy to install. It's a three-step process that I call trace, cut, and mount. The first step is to trace. We're going to trace the outline of the turntable onto the layout table where we want to install the turntable. The second step is cut. We're going to use a jigsaw to cut out that circle so that we have a hole to mount the turntable into. And then the third step is mount. We're going to bring this turntable up from the underside of the table and then secure it to the underside using these bolts coming up through these brackets. And there are four of these brackets on the turntable. And that's it. Once that's done, we will officially have the turntable installed on the layout. And then after that, all we have to do is wire it up and then configure all the tracks around the turntable. So the installation itself is very, very easy. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to bring this thing up onto the layout table. But before we do that, we want to get rid of the deck here because this is one of the most delicate parts of the turntable. In fact, it's probably the only delicate part. The rest of the turntable is made from aluminum. So to do that, it's very easy. All you do is gently pull up on the deck and there's one wire right here and you just disconnect that and the deck comes off and we'll set this aside and take this up onto the layout table. Okay, we're up here on the layout table and you know you're doing some serious work on your layout when you've got a footstool up on the layout. But anyway, here's the turntable and I don't know if you can see it, but I've already traced the outline of the turntable on the layout table. And the reason I did that off camera was because this is an existing layout, not a brand new layout and I needed to have the turntable in a very specific location so that it would line up with the existing tracks and so I did it off camera so you guys wouldn't have to sit here for 20 minutes watching me get the turntable in the precise location that I needed it but let me go ahead and show you how I did that it was very easy all you do is you flip over the turntable like so and then you get it into the exact position that you want to be. And again, this is easier on a brand new layout because you're not dealing with existing tracks. But get it where you want it. And then use a pencil or a Sharpie to trace the outline of the turntable. And that's all there is to it. And then you just lift up the turntable. And you've got a nice outline that shows you where you need to cut with the jigsaw to put the hole in the table where the turntable will then be mounted. So now we're going to go ahead and grab the jigsaw and cut out this circle so that we have the hole to mount the turntable. Okay, so I've set the turntable aside and now I'm just going to cut out this hole. So I'll start by drilling a 5 16 inch hole so that I can get the jigsaw in there. Okay, now I'll take my handy little jigsaw and put it in the hole and then work my way around the circle. Now, this is going to take me a little while because I'm not just sawing through wood. I'm going through wood and homosote. But fortunately, you don't have to watch all that. I'll just go ahead and start and then we'll skip ahead to the end. Okay, we've got a completed hole to bring the turntable up through. 
Now I actually had to do a little extra cutting because this part of my layout has two layers and so I had to cut another hole in the second layer but it's ready now so I'm going to bring the turntable underneath it, bring it up and we'll do the third step which is mounting it to the underside of the table. Okay, I've got the turntable mounted up and I've dropped the bridge back into the turntable to help me get all of the tracks around the turntable properly aligned. I've already worked on the lead-in track at the top right and right now I'm working on this track at the bottom left that goes off to the diesel shop. And then after that I will work on reinstalling all of the whisker tracks around the turntable and getting all of those wired up again. Now as I said in video blog episode 43, this new Millhouse River Studio turntable can accommodate more engines than the Atlas turntable because of the way it's designed. So with the Atlas turntable I had 15 engine stalls and with this new turntable I should have 18 engine stalls which will be a nice improvement. And then once all the whisker tracks are installed I will re-ballast everything and re-scenic everything and finally the last thing I will do is to put all of the brass detail parts onto the bridge of the turntable. And then finally once all of that's done I will then be able to install this third and final trestle section that will go across here. So there's still quite a bit of work left to do but I'm making good progress. Now the turntable is wired up and it is working right now. I'm not going to run an engine across it because the tracks on either side have not been secured down right and they haven't been tested but I will show you the turntable in action for a couple minutes and then we'll call it a day. Okay I managed to accidentally delete a scene in this video and so I'm having to reshoot it and so it's been a few days between the last take and this one and as you can see I've done quite a bit more work on the whisker tracks around the turntable but let me go ahead and show you the turntable in action. When I got this turntable, I ordered the optional indexing system, which is what this keypad here is for. Now, I'm not going to show you how this keypad works in detail, and I'm not going to talk about how to configure the turntable right now, because I'm going to do a separate video demonstrating all of that. But for now, I'm just going to show you the turntable in action for a minute. I've got an engine on the turntable. I'm not going to turn it on or move it today. It's just there for effect. So the first thing I'll do is move the turntable to the first whisker track there on the right. And there it goes. It's very quiet. Now one of the coolest things about this turntable is the speed control. You can set the speed to whatever you want. You can have it go incredibly slow or pretty darn fast. The default speed setting, which is what I've got it on right now, is such that when it's going to a distant location it will start off slow and then it will ramp up to a cruising speed and then as it approaches its destination it will slow back down to a crawl and glide right into the assigned spot. So let me show you that. I'm going to go to a spot that's about a quarter way around the turntable. There it goes. Now it's coming up to a cruising speed. Now it's cruising. And as it approaches its destination, it will slow back down, which should be in just a second. There it goes. And there it is. It's very quiet, very smooth. I can tell you that in the first few days that I've owned this turntable, the $1,500 that I paid for it, in my opinion, it was worth every penny. This thing is a fantastic piece of equipment. This is a precision turntable made here in the USA, and trust me, it's worth every penny. It's fantastic. Let me go ahead and move it again. There we go. It's really neat. Now, 
I'm not punching in very many specific destinations. I'm just showing you a demonstration. And you'll notice that I'm punching in quite a few buttons to make the thing move to where I want it to move to. And that's because I have not yet programmed the whisker tracks into the system yet. Once I've got all the whisker tracks installed, I will assign each track a two-digit ID number. And then going to that location will just be a matter of entering in that two-digit ID number and hitting go, so to speak. So right now I'm doing it the long way, which is to enter the position on the circle that I want it to go to. But later on, that'll be simplified with the two-digit ID system. So let's go back to where we started. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration. Now, if anything was confusing to you, such as this indexing system, don't worry because again, I'm going to do a separate video where I will demonstrate how to use the indexing system and how to configure the turntable. So keep an eye out for that. But anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel and I'll see you next time.